Hello, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to check out a video by Sahil titled as Gland Pharma Fundamental Analysis Latest Update. Let's jump to the video. Over the last few months, there is one stock where I received maximum request. It's Gland Pharma. This company had its IPO in November 2020 at levels of around 1500 and got listed at around 14% premium. Since it was at the peak of COVID, Pharma stocks had a dream rally. So the next 9 months, Gland Pharma jumped nearly 3 times to a level of around 4300. However, since last 2 years, the stock has been on continuous decline mode and after latest Q4 result, Gland Pharma has tanked another 30% to levels of around 950. So from its peak, Gland Pharma has brutally tanked more than 75%. The big question here is, why Gland Pharma has corrected 75% from its peak and can there be further correction? Or is it a value trap or golden opportunity to accumulate land pharma for long term wealth creation? To be really honest, in pharma sector it is not easy to understand the overall business dynamics because pharma companies have multiple products and they operate globally. So there are many global competitors in pharma sector and it is very difficult to understand each product offering of pharma companies and its potential vis-a-vis competition. On top of that, pharma sector is highly regulated. In short, pharma sector is extremely complicated. Still, I've tried to do a research from my side where I will share my knowledge with you all and discuss both pros and cons of Gland Pharma. This is the first time I'm covering this company. So first of all, we'll quickly try to understand the business model of the company and then we'll try to look at the key reason for sharp correction in its share price. Then we'll look at the future growth prospects and key risks that you must know before investing in this company. Needless to say, this video is only for educational purpose. Alright, let's get started. Established in 1978 in Hyderabad, Gland Pharma basically specializes in injectables. So one way to consume medicine is you take oral pills and another option is injection where the medicine is directly infused in the bloodstream. Obviously injections are more effective and that's where Gland Pharma operates. Its injectables find application in therapeutic areas such as your anti-diabetes, anti-infectives, oncology that is cancer, blood related issue, cardiac issue, gastrointestinal, then neurological, ophthalmics that deals with eye treatment, neuromuscular, respiratory, vitamin, minerals, etc. So Gland Pharma has a very extensive product portfolio. If you look at the regulatory track record of the company, it filed 334 drug application in US out of which 263 have been approved and 71 are pending for approval. Company has 8 facility out of which 4 are finished formulation facility and 4 are API manufacturing. So it is well backward integrated as it manufactures the API which is basically the raw material for production. This mitigates their supply chain related risk. Moreover, company has a consistent track record of compliance with no US FDA warning since inception of its facility. As of today, Gland Pharma operates in 60 plus countries with major focus on B2B space where it manufactures medicine for global companies with multiple revenue model. For instance, an IP led B2B partnership company generates revenue from sale of every dose plus profit sharing. Then in tech transfer led B2B partnership, company charges tech transfer fee and selling price per unit along with royalty. Then companies also into contract manufacturing for pharma companies with fixed price per unit. Apart from this, Gland Pharma also has a B2B model in India where it directly sells the products to end consumer. Overall, around 85 to 90 percent business of company comes from B2B sector and remaining from B2C. I hope you got a basic idea about the product offering of Gland Pharma and its business model. If you look at the revenue breakup by geography in FR23, 66 percent business has come from US. 8% from Europe, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, 7% from India and remaining 19% from rest of the world. Here please note that although Gland Pharma was established by PV and Raju, in 2017 they sold 74% stake for $1.1 billion to Fosun Pharma which is a Chinese pharma giant. So Fosun became the promoter of Gland Pharma and we all know that India does not have a great relationship with China so that also raises question on this acquisition. However, this acquisition also opened up opportunity for Gland Pharma to operate in few Chinese markets. Later in 2020 during IPO, Hosun reduced its holding to 58.36%. Now let us try to understand the financial performance of the company and that will help you understand the reason behind rise and fall of Gland Pharma. So financially Gland Pharma has been a very strong company with consistent growth year on year. If you look at its revenue, they have consistently grown from 527 crore in FR12 
to 755 crore, then 991, then 1348, then 1400, 1600, 2000, 2600, 3400, and then 4400 crore in FR22. However, after a sharp jump in revenue in FR23, its revenues have degrown to 3617 crore. The simple explanation for this degrowth is fall in demand post COVID and inventory rationalization. So, similar to all other pharma companies, land pharma sales also got boosted during COVID. For instance, when a US drug maker was looking for a manufacturing site in India to produce antiviral injection Remdesivir that is used in COVID-19 treatment, land offered its site to the drug maker. So, it is also into contract manufacturing. Naturally, when additional demand during COVID normalized, it impacted the revenue growth. Company in its investor presentation clearly mentioned the reason for 18% fall in revenue. First reason is inventory rationalization across customer in US market. So during COVID, customer needed high inventory that spiked the demand that is now rationalized. And second reason is higher pricing pressure with increased competition impacting the revenue and margin. Now this is a major culprit here. Company's margins have declined from levels of 35, 36, 38% to all time low of 28% in FR23. In fact, on quarter on quarter basis, the margins are at an all time low of 22% that resulted in operating profits falling from 284 crore in Q3 to 169 crore. One of the reasons for the sharp decline in margin is increasing competition. There is a rising competition in injectable space with entry of more Chinese players. Apart from this, one of their insulin production lines was shut down due to upgradation that also impacted the revenue growth. So basically, first company revenue tanked 18% year on year, then margin stands due to increasing competition and shutdown of production line. On top of that, company faced a 56 crore one-time loss as one of their clients got bankrupt. So if you look at their other income, it is showing minus 18 crore, mainly due to 56 crore one-time loss that we discussed recently. As if this was not enough, company even paid highest ever tax of 29%. Previously, the taxes were around 25%. As a result, their net profit tanked sharply from 228 crore to 79 crore. Company's cash from operations also jumped in the last few years, but in FR23, it dropped significantly from 791 crore to 368 crore. Although Gland Pharma is completely debt-free company. On profitability side, company has always commanded a high ROC of more than 20%, but in FR23, it also fell down to 15%. And off late, company has also struggled with huge inventory and inventory days shooting up from 205 days to 421 days and its cash conversion cycle has shoot up from 225 days to 381 days and working capital days have increased from 168 to 241 days. So basically, FR23 was a disaster for Gland Pharma on every single parameter right from fall in revenue, then your EBITDA margin, net profit, operating cash and then your sharp jump in inventory days and working capital. As a result, Gland Pharma share price tanked badly. Please note that during FR21, Gland Pharma sales and profit zoomed due to COVID. And of course, there was a lot of optimism due to bull run that resulted in three times jump in share price within few months. That made it very expensive. But then we saw fall in revenue, margins and net profit in FR23. And of course, the liquidity in the market has also dried up. And since in the short term, market is driven by sentiments the poor quarter-on-quarter -quarter performance created selling pressure on the stock and today Gland Pharma is trading much below its IPO levels with P ratio of 19. Now let us try to understand the future growth prospects of the company. One of the key growth drivers for Gland Pharma would be increase in chronic diseases like your diabetes, cancer, etc. that requires injectable for treatment. That's where Gland Pharma's prospects are looking promising. It recently completed the acquisition of Senexi for 114 million euro, that is roughly around 1000 crore rupee. With this, Gland Pharma is planning to expand its CDMO offering in European market, that has an addressable opportunity of 4 billion euro. Please note that Gland Pharma is a cash rich company with latest cash and cash equivalent of 3700 crore. Although the latest acquisition is not reflected in its cash position, but even if you deduct the acquisition of 1000 crore, company is still left with 2700 crores of cash. So there is immense growth opportunity for both organic and inorganic growth in the future. In fact, company is consistently investing in building its capacity, which is clearly visible in its fixed asset that has increased from 954 crore in FI21 to 1571 crore in FI23. All these investments would deliver results in the coming years. Today, Land Pharma is available at a market cap of 15,500 crore with a PE ratio of 19, 
and even if you look at its shareholding pattern domestic institutional investors have constantly added stake in the company from 10.8% in December 20 to 11 12 then 17 21 and latest at 23% and it includes some top mutual funds like Mirai Asset Emerging Mutual Fund ICICI Prudential India Opportunity Nippon India UTI FlexiCap and Kotak Emerging Equity Scheme so dia has almost doubling down their bet on gland pharma in last 12 months shows strong conviction on this company Although FIs are the net seller, but net net public holding has reduced from peak of 19% to currently at 14.6%. So clearly, Gland Pharma looks like a fundamentally strong company. The future prospects are also bright. Company is also growing both organically and increasing its manufacturing capacity, and inorganically growing with acquisition. But there are few risks that raise this concern. One of the key risks is intense competition, especially with entry of new Chinese player in injectable space. And of course. Gland Pharma has Chinese promoter. I personally like to invest in Indian companies with Indian promoter. So there are risks and there are opportunities. Everything in the future will depend upon Gland Pharma business execution and quarter on quarter performance. But like I said, considering 10-12 years of consistent outperformance, I would like to give benefit of doubt to this company as one bad year can't decide the fate of the company. In fact, considering the growth prospects and leadership of Gland Pharma in the injectable space. This correction looks like a good opportunity to make an entry in this stock, but it is very important to keep a track of quarter on quarter performance and then take a call on whether to add or not in a systematic manner. So in this video, I try to discuss both pros and cons of investment in Gland Pharma. Like I said before, pharma sector is very complicated, and it's really difficult to understand the in-depth dynamics in this space. Hence, I don't like to have a lot of exposure in pharma sector. Now I want you to tell me in the comments what is your take on Gland Pharma. Is it worth investing the money at current levels? Let me know in the comments. And if you find this video useful, do share it with your.